Okay, I want to talk about taking the menu that we've made, the little main menu, the widget, and using it to control some other things within our scene. So in doing that, we're going to make a totally new blueprint and control it using our main menu. So what I've done here is I created a generic blueprint. And you can do that by going Add New, Blueprint Class, and in this case, we did an actor. Most times you're going to do an actor. These are all specific blueprints that do other things. So we just created an actor and it puts this little sphere here. I named it wood change underscore BP. Now, when you go to edit the blueprint, you will see that in my blueprint, there actually isn't anything here. If I go to the viewport, there's nothing. It's just that actor and a default scene root component there, which is basically nothing. It's basically a placeholder type thing. That's the only component here. But what I did do is add variables. And what I did, let's just uh, start it over here. I added a variable and I called it wood actors. And click the eyeball to make it visible outside of this blueprint. And we set it to static mesh actor here. You can search for it, static mesh actor. Object reference. And then here, instead of making it just a single object, we are making it an array. That's what that little icon means. And so we're making a collection of static meshes that go with this blueprint. There's nothing in the blueprint except for this variable that holds a few static meshes that are, of course, visible outside of the blueprint. So if we can comp compile here, hit save. And then we click on our actor here. We now have, because there's visible variables, if we click on the actor, we will see access to those variables right here. So one more time, if we go in here, if this was unchecked, we compiled and saved, we would not see anything here, but because I made them visible, we can see them outside of the blueprint here. And we can change the category too if we wanted. We could say static mesh actors, compile, save. Now the category will be static mesh actors and we go out here, static mesh actors right there. So there's three of them. And what I'm going to do is put a collection of these doors into this blueprint as variables. So we do that by clicking on here and we're just setting the variables. The variables are going to be equal to whatever we set here. And I can do it with a eyedropper. So I want that door. So the first object in the array, the first actor in the array is that door I just picked. The second one's going to be this door. And the third one's going to be this door. Now I'm going to use the main menu to change the material of those doors. So basically what I'm going to do is click a button in the main menu. It's going to look for this blueprint in my scene. And it's going to grab the variables out of there and whatever they're equal to. Since we just set it equal to these three doors, it's going to grab these three doors and say set the material on those doors to a different kind of wood. And then we'll put a flip-flop in to make it so that when you click it again, it'll go back to these this kind of wood. Okay, so pretty simple in theory. But an important part is to just have this blueprint sitting in our scene that has these variables available in it. And we can set them to whatever. We can also add more to it if we wanted to. So it's adjustable. Now let's look at our main menu button to see if we can figure out how to make it work. Okay, so in the designer of my main menu, widget. I just took this button that we already had and I said I changed the text to say change wood. And of course when we're in a button we can go to the on click and hit view and it takes us to the graph and we have a event on click button one that triggers whatever we have over here. So obviously I already have it set up but we're going to do it again. So first of all we want to flip flop so we can go back and forth. We've seen flip-flops already. Then what do we want the flip-flop to do? Well, first we need to find that blueprint in our scene. 
So what we can do is say get all actors of a class and the class that we're looking for is that blueprint we set up. So that creating that blueprint actually cr actually creates its own class and within that class we have we can have really anything inside of there functions variables but we just have a few variables inside of it. But the name of the class was would change, right? Would change underscore BP. That's the name of that blueprint that holds those variables. Now you can see that out actors, so it's looking for the class and it's grabbing whatever is in that class, the actors that are in that class. We have only one that's in there, right? That blank actor sitting in the middle of our scene. That's our one actor that belongs to that class called would change BP. So it's giving us an array symbol here, but we only have one. So we're just going to get the first object in the array. Array get, okay? So make, this is set to zero because our index starts with zero, not one. And so that's just telling us the first thing that it comes comes back out of the array, that's what we're grabbing. And it's just that one actor. From now, now that we have that actor, we can grab the variables that's in it. So what was the variable called? Get wood actors. Okay, and you can see that's giving us an array of the wood actors that we have set as variables. Okay, so we now have a reference to that. When we click the button, it grabs a reference to our three doors. Let's look at what I've done already up here. So now we take off this executable and we run a for each loop. And if you're not familiar with coding principles, a for each loop is going to take and do one thing where it's going to run some code for each object in this array that we have collected. Array is just a group of var variables, multiple variables. So we have three doors here and for each one of them, we're going to do a certain amount of code over here. So run this array into here. And now say for each object in the array, let's do this. And we'll put that in the loop body. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to set the material. Set material. Don't think this is the right static mesh that we're looking for. We want to drag from here. So the element in the array is there's each different door is one element in this array. So for whichever one we're on, we're going to set the material. And it will go for each one. So it'll start with zero and then it'll do one and do the same thing. And then it'll do two and do the same thing. And then it'll stop. Okay, so let's set the material here. I brought in a substance material called beech wood. You can grab it too with the substance. It's free. Beech natural wood mat. Okay, compile, save. Let's see if this is working yet. In here, we can hit play. And we can hit M for our menu and say change wood. And there you go, the door changed. If I hit change wood again, it doesn't go back because we have not set up our flip flop yet. We also haven't set up our menu so we can exit it without quitting the game. One other issue we're having is if we look over here at this door and we hit M and change the wood, you can see that this one's working, but this one's changing the wood of the door frame. So that isn't right. We need to fix that. We can do that by, well, let's look first of all, examine what's going on. If I click on this door, you can see element zero is the wood. But if I click on this door here, you can see the, the wood is in element one. So for the third object in our array right here, line 37, that's this door over here, we need to do something a little different. So in main menu two, again, we are going to look at here and say, Okay, that we're setting the material for element index zero. We saw that for two of the doors, that's the right one to change to beach natural wood. But if we're on array index three or two, that's that third door, we need to do something different. So we need to bring a branch out right here. And say, okay, if the array index equals three, and we'll just type in equals. 
if it's equal to three, no, two, sorry, two, then we need to do something different. If it's not equal to that one, to two, then we can run this one, because that one's right. Okay, so really we just need to copy this and paste it. And if it's true, if it is equal to two or that third door, then we need to just do the exact same thing, except we want to change number element index one, not element index zero. Okay, let's see if that solves our problem. We'll start. Hit M for menu, change wood, and there you go. Now it's working properly. Now the last thing we need to do is set up our little flip-flop action. So we can really just copy all of this, control C and control V down here, set it up to the B node in the flip-flop, and then go back here and change this to chair wood instead of beach. Compile and save. Let's start it again. M for menu, change wood change wood back. Okay, so that's a pretty simple one. We could, of course, make it much more complicated. We could even set up an array of materials that we want it to go through on the doors. This is just flip-flopping be between two, but if we had like five materials, we could set up a whole array of materials and shuffle through each one of those too. So there's a lot you could do but that's kind of one way to set it up so that it's connected to this button here. And the trick was this get all actors of a class and referencing that, that kind of empty blueprint that's sitting in our scene that just has an array of doors sitting in it. And once we got access to those doors, those actors, those static mesh actors, we could then change their materials. So that is one way to do that. And one way to add more functionality to our menu items.